Hey, we're back. This is part two of our mini disc series. And today we are going to open up and fix a mini disc player. So the particular machine we're going to be looking at today is called the MDS 501. And this was a full-sized um, mini disc deck for your home. This was meant to go on top of your stereo receiver, what have you, and your stack of, uh, you know, hi-fi equipment or whatever you want to call it. Um, apparently, this was the very first one uh, that Sony made, the fir first full-size one. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, that you could get. It's really hard to find information about this particular model, about most mini disc players. In fact, um, a lot of the links that I tried looking up, I could, I could find some websites that had references to things, but they would link to other websites and those websites are gone now. So it'd be a dead link. Um, a lot of this stuff refers to things on the Sony website, which has been taken down now. So there, there's not any reference to a lot of this stuff online anymore. So it's pretty difficult to discover a lot of interesting details about this until I found this archive website that has scans of a lot of old um, magazines from the 90s. Uh, so I'll, I'll link to that uh, website in the description. I'll link to also the two in particular articles that I, I want to talk about here real quick before we get into opening the machine up. I want to make sure we learn a little bit about the machine before we start taking it apart and things just so we kind of understand uh, what the machine does and, and things about it. So uh, I want to talk about this particular magazine called Stereo Review. This was the March 1994 uh, issue of this magazine. I don't know what the um, circulation of this magazine or the popularity of it was, but I will tell you that I did notice there is a full page ad that Sony put into this particular issue of this magazine. Um, and not just one full page, but eight full pages. Eight? Eight, Bob. Eight full pages of ad in this magazine leading up to the review of the MDS 501. So this was clearly a strategy that Sony's employing there before you, well, as you're looking through the magazine, you're going to come across this ad talking about how great mini disc is. Then you're going to get to the review of their mini disc player just a few pages later. And I should also mention that this was before online advertising was really a thing in 1994. So you were doing, you know, uh, TV ads, which Sony was doing, and they were doing print ads. And I'll tell you, print ads were not cheap, especially in this era. Um, they're probably tens of thousands of dollars, I would guess, on average, based on certain things I've experienced in the past. There's tens of thousands of dollars for a full page ad in a major magazine. Again, I don't know how major this particular magazine was or what the circulation was. I'll have to assume it's big enough to merit Sony putting an eight page ad in it. Uh, so I can imagine this was not cheap to have just one page in it, but to have eight pages in it, uh, the, that's that's a lot. Eight, eight Bob. So. Sony developed this whole eight page ad and I would imagine they didn't just put it in one magazine. They must have put it in several magazines. So the point is Sony is spending some major bucks to promote mini disc at this point. So here's the ad first page says, what if cassettes weren't cassettes? And then it goes to the next page and it says, you could find a song in a second. Uh, so, by the way, this is probably the print ad equivalent of an infomercial. And, and I say that because in an infomercial, it always starts out with this sort of black and white, the problem section of the infomercial where it sets up some 
horrendous problem that needs to be solved. And oh, how can it be solved? Oh, here's our product that solves that problem. So this is what they're doing in this ad. And this is the black and white portion of it where it shows somebody struggling with to, you know, to do some mundane task like crack an egg or whatever it is. And, and oh, has this ever happened to you? Well, this is that part of the ad and it says, ever try searching for a song on cassettes? You could grow old waiting for the tape to wind its way through the player. It makes you wonder why they ever called it fast forward. But wait, but now here's mini disc, the ultra miniature music carrier that's personal and portable. Minidisc uses laser optical technology to find your music instantly and precisely, no matter where your favorite songs are located. You'll never play that old waiting game again. So it, it's pretty funny that it's so uh, infomercial-esque in the way they do it. So they set it up where, oh, aren't cassettes just the worst? Well, great, we've got a solution for you. It's the mini disc. Uh, so then the, the next page shows some uh, albums that are available and it goes on to talk about how, how great albums on mini discs are and they're smaller and they're more portable and they sound great and look at all these different record labels that are going to be releasing uh, albums on it. So don't you want a mini disc player? And then it goes on to talk about it shows, it looks like a piece of a steering wheel here. And it talks about how mini discs are so, you know, shock resistant and that you're not going to have a skipping issue, which is one of the things that I talked about in part one of uh, the series is that, you know, part of the selling points was anti-skip recordability and better quality audio. And these were all the reasons they were trying to push people away from cassette and into this new format. Here's another page that shows a car audio version of a mini disc and some albums, some very 1994 album selections down here. Um, and then uh, on page six of the ad, it shows our MD s501 player that uh, we're going to be taking apart later and so this is actual ad um, that shows uh, that player specifically one thing that i will give great credit to this ad for is this page in particular which taught me something that i did not quite know before so i knew that on the mini disc, there were there is a table of contents. So when you put the disc in, it reads the table of contents. The table of contents tells the machine how many tracks there are, how long they are, where they are on the disc, so that when you do the forward and backward button on the track select, you can just skip instantly uh, to the to the different tracks. And that's how it knows where all the tracks are and where they start and where they end. So I knew that, that's pretty obvious. What I didn't realize is that um, this point that they make here, it says it's, Minidisc makes it easy. Uh, you can resequence songs at the touch of a button. If you erase a track, all subsequent tracks are instantly renumbered. And if you have to replace a track with a longer song, the mini disc recorder will automatically find the right space on the disc. In fact, a mini disc can be recorded and re-recorded more than a million times without any loss in sound quality, making it the ideal digital disc for mixes you make. So this, this is pretty interesting because it actually points out that if you did want to make a change to your mixtape, like you wanted to take out a song or you wanted to add songs in the middle, you couldn't really do that with a cassette tape without re having to re-record the whole thing. Because if you try to take a song out of the middle or record over the song and it's too long, it'll start recording over the next song on the tape and it, it's a big mess. So, um, this basically allows you to insert a new song. Say if you have a 10 song uh, 
mix on your mini disc, you could add two new songs in the middle of the mix instead of try having to add them on to the end where there's space like, like you would have to do with the cassette tape. You could just add them anywhere you want in the in the mix and then it'll reorganize the table of contents and let the machine know, oh, there's two new tracks. Here they are. And then it re it redoes the whole thing, which is really cool, actually. So that's something I didn't realize was a feature of uh, the mini disc format in general. So that's a that's a pretty cool thing. So moving on, this appears to be sort of a center fold, I guess, advertisement. So it's like half of the machine on one page and half on the other. Um, and it just goes on to give a few details about the MDS 501 and and mini disc in general and then it ends with um this page here so uh that said that that is the advertise the eight page advertisement in the stereo uh review moving on to the review section of this same magazine um there's a couple pages of review in here but i just want to i'm instead of reading the whole thing i'm just going to read a couple excerpts um First off, the MDS-501 is the first full-size home mini disc recorder. Um, and it specifies full-size specifically because it says the earlier MDS-101 was a midi size component. Uh, so that means there was an earlier home mini disc player, but it wasn't a full-size one. I guess it was they call it MIDI size, which I'm not too familiar with that term, but it, based on a picture I found of it, it looks like it was kind of half size of what a normal stereo uh, component would look like. So it wouldn't really stack very well. I guess you'd have to put it on the top of your stereo stack. Um, so this is the first full sized home mini disc machine. Also worth noting, the price tag is a thousand dollars, and this is a thousand nineteen ninety four dollars, which means it was more than a thousand dollars. So, um, it, it and what I mean by that is it's not a thousand twenty twenty dollars. This is a thousand nineteen ninety four dollars. So that means it was quite expensive. Um, so this was kind of un, I would say unattainable to the average user i think this was only somebody who had a lot of money uh to spend could really have something like this it, this seems indicative of why the format maybe didn't catch on because it was very expensive um i don't know a lot of people who could afford something like this um another thing i want to point out so on the on this machine there are uh, inputs and outputs on the back so you can record directly into it from other devices and then output it to your amplifier or what have you uh, so it has uh, analog connections so the RCA ports but it also has digital ports which are the um, optical toss link connection so there's an input and an output optical on there so that that allows you to have a completely digital recording onto a mini disc if you like uh, which is pretty cool the catch here which i didn't realize is this this uh, note in the review mentions this it says like all other consumer digital audio recorders the mds 501 incorporates the serial copy management system or scms and will therefore refuse to make a direct digital copy of a source that is itself a direct digital copy of an original. So that's kind of confusing, but what I think that means is that if someone copies their CD and gives it to you and you try to make a digital copy onto your mini disc of that copy, it will somehow detect that it's a copy and not let you do it. Uh, I guess the, the workaround of this is you can copy it over the RCA analog ports, but then it's not a true digital copy anymore, which is not as good, but would you tell? I'm not sure, but um, so that's, that's interesting and kind of disappointing because uh, if you're gonna spend a lot of money on a component like this, you'd, you wouldn't want weird artificial 
limitations being placed on it like this. Um, so that, that kind of is worrying. I have not yet tried um, to do any recordings with this machine yet, just because I don't have any mini discs. I've got the one mini disc that it came with and that's it. So I need to buy some blanks so that I can try the recording. But as of now, I've not tried this yet, but I think it's an interesting thing to note. Next, I want to talk about one other review before I move on. And this was from a magazine called Audio, the Equipment Authority. And this was a November 1994 issue. Uh, this one goes into real deep detail about the machine and has graphs and charts and all kinds of stuff in it. Again, I'll link to this so you can read it yourself if you want to. I do want to just highlight this one quick thing as the first Sony home product of a new format, the MDS 501 follows what appears to be Sony's standard philosophy, i.e. load the first product with features and functions and see which ones consumers actually use. So that's good for me because that means this machine in particular has tons of features that may have not made it into future revisions of the home mini disc player. So that's a good sign. Um, so moving on, um, that's, I think that's an interesting note about this. So that gives us a, a little bit of uh, background on this machine and kind of when it came out, seems to be 90, 1994 uh, sometime. And this, uh, like I said, was the first home version of the mini disc player. Well, that's all the time we have today. Unfortunately, I got a little too long-winded going through those reviews and all the history of the device. We didn't have time to actually get to fixing the device, but tune in next time and we'll do that. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, you know what? This one's dumb. Dump it. Trash it. This one's garbage.